starting with the cells, again, we're going to focus this on what you need to know, things that you're going to see recurring. A lot of the cell structure, you need to understand the structure in order to understand the metabolism that goes on. And then once you understand the metabolism that goes on, it makes certain disorders easier to understand. So that's why we kind of start with this basic thing. You're not going to see a question on NCLEX that asks, you know, what is the makeup of a cell membrane, but you may ask some, be asked something about a disorder that affects cell membranes. So cells are defined as the structural and functional unit of all living matter. And cells come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and arrangements, but they share many of the same characteristics. So what we're going to talk about is general cells. This is like the Walmart cell. It's just generic, kind of has all the functions and structures of a, a generalized cells. When we start talking about muscle cells and nerve cells and skin cells, then we start talking about differences in shape and size and structure. But generally, they follow this kind of organization. So we're going to talk about the structures of the cell. We're going to start from the outside and work our way in. The cell membrane that houses the cell, it's kind of the wrapper of the cell. We also call it the, the plasma membrane. And basically, it separates the inside of the cell from the outside of the cell. And the cell membrane is described as selectively permeable. That means that some stuff gets in and other stuff does not. Sometimes we use the term semi-permeable. So this is kind of the arrangement of the cell membrane. So this would be inside the cell, this would be outside the cell intracellular and extracellular. Intra means within. Extra means outside of. So basically what the cell membrane is made up of is two layers of phospholipids and a bunch of proteins. These molecules are phospholipids. They have a phosphate end and they have two little tails that are lipid ends. So we refer to it as a phospholipid bilayer, two layers of phospholipids. Okay, and the tails kind of orient themselves so they're facing each other. And then poking through at random places are these big globs of protein. And the proteins have a couple of functions. One of the things they do is they give structural support, kind of like rebar. You know what rebar is? It's like the metal um, pieces that go through cement. It makes the cement stronger. So it gives some structural support. And the proteins some of the proteins, not all the proteins, but some of the proteins have pores or channels that go through the center. See how this one looks like a, a bead? It's got a hole that goes through the center. <laughs> that creates pores or channels for things to pass through the cell membrane. So that arrangement, the two layers of phospholipids and the protein, that's kind of the overall picture. And again, the proteins either provide holes or channels for things to get through, or they provide structural support. So there's two ways that a substance can move across that cell membrane. We're going to talk a lot about movement across the cell membrane. It can either dissolve through that phospholipid layer. If it's lipid soluble, that means it just kind of melts right through that layer. If it's not lipid soluble, then it's going to have to go through those protein channels. So for example, small molecules like oxygen and carbon dioxide they can very easily pass right through that lipid membrane. Other molecules, like sodium and chloride, have to go through the protein channels. And if whatever's going into the cell is bigger than the protein channel, then it has to go in a completely different way. It can't cross the cell membrane. So we're still on this outside area of the cell. Two structures you may or may not find on the outside of the cell. First one is cilia. And cilia are short little hair-like projections. And I think cilia kind of look like a crew cut. If you can imagine a crew cut on the outside of the cell, it kind of looks like a crew cut. Or it looks like, did anybody see Finding Nemo? It looks like the anemone that Nemo lives in, right? Kind of does this kind of motion. And cilia, they, with that wave-like motion, they sweep things across the surface of the cell. And you usually see ciliated cells in places like the respiratory tract or the digestive tract where things need to sweep across the surface of the cells. Flagella are thicker and longer projection. These are like dreadlocks. So imagine a cell with dreads. And the flagella move in a whip-like motion and they actually propel the cell. They allow the cell to move. So there's a picture. This is a cell covered with 
cilia, and this is a cell with one single flagellum. Now we're going to go inside the cell. We have a bunch of organelles, which just means little organs, and we have the nucleus and we have the cytoplasm. So if you think of the cell kind of like an egg, the shell would be the cell membrane. And then the yolk of the egg would be like the nucleus. And the nucleus is the control center of the cell. It contains all the genetic information. It controls protein synthesis. Protein synthesis is a term I'm going to use a lot, making proteins. We use proteins for all kinds of different things. Whatever the cells function, wherever it is, whatever it's supposed to be doing, that information is contained in the brain of the cell or the nucleus. And the nucleus has its own membrane around it. That's called the nuclear membrane. And inside the nucleus, it has its own little brain. It has its own nucleolus. And it's inside that nucleolus where our genes are contained. OK, so if the yolk of the egg is like the nucleus, then the egg white is kind of like the cytoplasm. And it's the watery stuff that's surrounding the nucleus inside the cell membrane. And all the other little organelles, all those little organs, are kind of suspended in that cytoplasm. So it's mostly water, and then it also has some electrolytes and some nutrients in it. And it also includes something called inclusion bodies. And I'll give you an example of an inclusion body in a little bit. But basically, an inclusion body is a temporary organ. OK, so here's our generic Walmart cell. So the big purple thing in the middle is the nucleus. So the little thing inside the nucleus is the nucleolus. And it has its own membrane around it. Outside here is the cell membrane. And this cell has some cilia on it. And then all this stuff, you can't really see it, but all this stuff is kind of floating in the cytoplasm. All right, so let's talk about the organelles, the little stuff floating in the cytoplasm. The first one is the mitochondria. And the mitochondria is the power plant of the cell. This is the part of the cell that makes energy. What did I say energy was? ATP. This is the site in the cell that makes the ATP. And if we cut that mitochondria in half, it's got this membrane inside. See this folded kind of membrane? That's called the cristae. And inside the cristae are these special little enzymes. And those enzymes are responsible for making ATP. Now, another structure called ribosomes are responsible for protein synthesis. And we find ribosomes in two places. They are either free-floating in the cytoplasm, or they are stuck to a structure called the endoplasmic reticulum.